Hey guys, quick little note before you start the video today. I'm digging into the archives deep for this one. I forgot I did it and thought, yeah, this is the one I want to put up this week. So for those of you who don't know, here are Cocktails and Rocktails with me, your most notorious groupie, Allison Rouse. When I first started this channel, it was called Backstage Bimbo TV. Tongue in cheek, of course. But so that's how far I'm digging into the archives. So if anybody's wondering, that's why. But there you guys go. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, episode. Cheers, big ears. Well, hello, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. Thanks, everybody, for tuning back in. It's me again, Alice Rouse, your most notorious groupie. Author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. That's right, folks. Back for another week in adventure of rock and roll. And thank you, everybody, for all the love, all the support, all the awesome interactions. You can get my book. The link is down in the description. It's even on walmart.com. You can go there and type in Alice and Rouse. Blam, here I am. And if you want an autographed copy, private message me on Instagram. I'll tell you how to do it. I can order it, get your address, send it on, but I do charge for that. So there's cost. I'll let you guys know more if you private message me. All right. So today on our Rocky Talkie, we are going to talk about the evolution of dating in rock and roll that I have experienced in my life from the 80s until now even. And it's such an evolution. It's not as crazy and wild as people think. Not at all. And I'm going to finish. I was just, just got done uh, filming Bruce Dickinson, and this is a big beer. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off this Iron Maiden Trooper beer. Celebrate the 80s. Because this is when the evolution of dating begins. And Bruce Dickinson was all part of that. All right. So everybody, grab your troopers, kick up your feet, and let's have a little Rocky Talkie, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Like I said in the Bruce Dickinson, decent little basic pub beer. Kind of like it's daddy. Yeah, Bruce Dickinson. Oh, everybody say hi to Suki. Hi, love chicken. What you doing, baby? He's usually asleep. If there's a blanket on the bed, that's because my cat's in there. So he's usually usually sleeping. All right. So we're going to talk about the, the evolution of dating and rock and roll, which is, you know, actually kind of really on par with as we grow older, our values change and our actions change. Like in the 80s, of course, we were all young and single and wild and just starting out in rock and roll and discovering and experimenting. So there was a lot of, oh, what? Do you want out? Hang on, guys. Okay. So, like I was saying, there was a lot of rules to the nose strings attached thing. Now, obviously, if a rocker is going to be banging one groupie, he's banging a lot of groupies. And if a groupie is going to be banging a rock star in the 80s, she was probably banging a lot more. As we all know. So, there was that kind of unspoken understanding because... There was not a lot of people who had women at home and a lot of rock stars. Because like I said, we were all so young. Too young to be married, too fresh in this world to be getting serious about it, traveling the world too much to be getting serious. So, you know, dating back then was, you know, there was a lot of, you know, bye-bye, see you, never. Or maybe next tour if I, you know, if the groupie chooses to come and hang out with that rocker again, whatever. You know, it was a lot, or, but there was a lot of, a lot more flings than there were relationships. Because like I said, we were all so young. I mean, not just the groupies, but the rockers as well. They were all early 20s. Most of the guys that we were hanging out with, minus, you know, the already established bands, were just coming up like Rat, like Motley Crue, like Metallica, and Megadeth. Anthrax, um, God, everybody who was coming out in the 80s because it was all new and nobody wanted to get serious with anybody because everybody wanted to experience it and live it freely without guilt or shame. And that was okay. You know, that was okay for a lot of years in the 80s. And it was so much 
fun because, like I said, it wasn't something you sat around and talked about. It was a kind of underlying knowledge that, yeah, I'm probably not the only one from both sides, the groupie and the rock star side. But then you start to get older and your needs and wants, even on the road, your needs and wants change. You need someone who's more emotionally there for you, more spiritually, more friendship and sexually and everything else that they want their groupie, their road wife to be. So you kind of, as, as time started changing into the 90s, and of course, you know, with the onset of grunge saying groupies are so passe, as I always say, really, Eddie Vedder? Because I have lots of stories of grunge, and I'll tell more. And I've already told a couple. So, obviously, you know, by then, by the 90s, we were all getting older. You know, I was getting 20, 21. I was living on my own, maturing in life and in, mentally and emotionally. So, as things kind of changed then, you start to get more emotional attachments. And the more you see somebody over the years, by the time the 90s hit, I was five years into my rock and roll fantasy already. So I had already established some long-term relationships. And you can't help but want, you know, this is about, in the 90s, my early 20s is when the question, so how many other guys are you seeing? How many other musicians started to come into play? <laughs> how many other groupies are you seeing, Sweepy? Well, but what if you come on the road with me and we don't see any other? Okay, I'm cool with that. So that's kind of when you go on the road, your relationship with that rock star changes. And I had already been on the road with a few rock stars. Because like I said, you you create a bigger bond and you create a larger trust with that guy that is beyond the hedonism and flings of the 80s, you know, which was, like I said, a blast. Because when you're young and experimenting, you don't want all the crazy attachments or Sorry, i got to cut my bangs. But you don't want all that crazy attachment and guilt and everything running around because that was not the 80s. The 80s was about being free. But like I said, once the 90s came in, and, you know, in the 80s, relationships were made because that's when I started to make my relationship with the guys in Metallica was in the 80s. But having met James showed me that, oh, fuck, you really could have feelings for these guys and vice versa. They could have them back for you. But as we all know, James never liked the games I played, the band game. And we all know the story about the band game here, if you read the book. 100% inspired that line in the song, if not more. But so I had already experienced kind of a shift in that I'm just here, they're here to be my fling, I'm here to be their fling, I'm, we're here to have fun. You know, as you spend more time with them in the 90s reach and you get a little older, like I said, your relationships become something totally different. You don't have to sleep with every band in the world anymore. You don't have to have some crazy story to tell. We're all still partying and having a great time, but not really having, you know, the backstage parties like we, like we used to. And not like they were parties like in Rockstar or anything, because... I never saw any of that shit happen. I never saw big orgies or girls standing in line. That was never part of dating and rock and roll. Yeah, there's what I call, I call it the cattle call where roadies go and still to this day, go drag a bunch of pretty women into the meet and creep so the rockers can kind of see if there's any fun to be had for the night. That still goes on. And that went on in the 80s. However, in the 90s and 2000s, it really didn't go on that much. Like, backstage became more of a tight circle. So, because in the 80s, we were the last of the great groupie scene. There was no other groupie scene because, like I said, grunge killed the groupie scene. And the rockers didn't really trust as many groupies as they did like us in the 80s. And since we already knew them, we already had established relationships. So that trust came in and we started be forming Stronger bonds, stronger relationships, long-term relationships on and off the road. So the 90s came, we all grew up, and then I moved to Vegas. And by the time I moved to Vegas, seriously, like, I was not 
hanging out with Iron Maiden and Motley Crue and Rat and all these other bands that I had hung out in the 80s because with the evolution of dating and rock and roll, it also is affected by the evolution of your taste in music and great musicians and what the band has to say in their songs. You know, so that kind of influenced me as well because I was like, oh, I've outgrown Motley Crue and Rat. I don't need to be hanging on to my youth with Faster Pussycat. I'm very much the progression of music and love to discover the new stuff and really, truly great musicians. And it, it be, really became like all my great relationships were with some of the best of the best. Like I said, Vinnie Paul, one of the best drummers we would ever know in our lifetime. John Ed Twistle, best musician we will ever know in our lifetime. So along with my growing taste in music also became a growing taste in wanting these longer term relationships with the rockers. Like I said, bass player for 13 years. Technically 15, but we don't talk about the last two with him. Oh, motherfucker. So yeah, so it wasn't always like, you know, and I get a lot of questions from girls about what's this guy like and I want to fuck James Hetfield. And it's like, don't tell me you want to fuck a guy that I was my first love. You know, I mean, because that was another evolution that us as groupies had in rock and roll, that it's not a free for all anymore, that there are emotions, that we do like certain guys and we want to keep seeing these guys and keep growing the relationships with them. So even... The attitude of the group of the groupies that I knew changed because those relationships became more internally meaningful, heart and soul with the boys. Not just sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but heart and soul came with it as time went on. So that kind of, you know, drives me nuts a little bit because it's like, how would you like it if I told you what I wanted to do to your boyfriend or your first love or whatever? No, as a woman, we're all like, uh uh. So that kind of, you know, what people don't really get, they think it was just, they see Almost Famous, they see rock stars that really portray the groupies as disposable rather than that's not what we were to the boys. We were so much more as time went on because like I said, we were in it 30 fucking years. You know you're going to have bass player 13 when you Metallica 10. Seriously, like, you know, the longer you spend with someone, the more you're going to feel for them, the more you're going to enjoy them, the more you're going to have that comfort zone. And that was dating and the evolution of rock and roll. Like, relationships became serious. And it wasn't just the sex. It wasn't just the fly by night. Let's see. Let's have fun and live on this temporary chemistry. It was, you know what? I really like talking to you and I want to see you again on and off the road and that was another evolution in dating that you know in the 80s it was pretty much all on the road except for a couple bands that I don't talk about Metallica when they were off the road or anything like that or Megadeth or whoever you know I don't talk about them when they're off the road or Vinny I do talk about Vinny off the road because a lot of my relationship with Vinny was off the road relationships expanded beyond just the road family so that was establishing even more of that connection that this is real life and they want you in their real life and not just in the brouhaha that is the rock and road life. So, yeah, and it became a lot more serious and with that became more heartbreak, more sadness, you know, more joys, more trust, more bonding. It was, it's so, it's so beautiful. That's kind of what it is today, especially now because in the COVID bubble that is rock and roll, there's not a lot of backstage going on. And it's only broken if, if a tour, because not all tours are like this right now. But if the tour is saying that you can't have backstage passes and meet and creeps because of the COVID bubble, once in a while that bubble is burst to let the people that they want, that they love, that they've known, that they've established relationships with in. Like I said a few weeks ago with my friend Oris and the tour he's on. And it was crazy to watch the guys see. They're like, oh my God, she's a groupie. Holy shit, they hadn't seen one in two years, three years. 
years. And especially not one that's been around like I have. So, like I said, the evolution of dating and rock and roll, it wasn't always disposable sex, drugs, and rock and roll, guys. Not at all. I mean, read my book. When you see a band year after year after year, tour after tour, on the road, off the road, that's how to tell who the important ones were. Because not every band in rock and roll that you hang out with or sleep with is going to be significant in your life. No. No more than our friends from high school were. Maybe a couple were, but not all of them. It's like my dad said. You will establish many acquaintances in your life, but have very few friends. And those few friends are, like I said, the evolution of dating. It became real. Like you could actually have a relationship with this guy. Maybe see, maybe see having a life together. Who knows? Because it did happen. You know, there were discussions that there were things done that I don't talk about. And I think that's kind of my own fault that people think that it was a very much disposable lifestyle, which it isn't. For most of the women backstage, it can be, but for those few rare, real groupie slash road wives that are their heart and soul and not for the attention and the ego, that's when those dating starts to evolve into something more than just sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So before somebody emails me again, tell me they want to fuck James Hetfield, read my fucking book or Look at how many times I've been with people and rethink it because I don't think anybody, and because they're rock stars doesn't mean that they're your territory or common territory to be passed around and shared either. Because groupies were not either. and That was another evolution of dating and rock and roll. Rock stars were not banging 12 girls a night. Groupies were not lining up, chewing their gum, saying, I want to blow before you sit on it. No, that was not it at all. Like I said, in the 80s, it was fun. It was hedonism, but we were having fun with one partner because AIDS happened. So we were all very, very careful and very protective. Kept ourselves pristine. So, but like I said, that was, that's kind of dating and evolution of rock and roll. We went from young kids discovering this whole rock and roll lifestyle in the world on the road to establishing friendships and relationships and love and heartbreak and love again. Yeah, but so there you guys go. There's a little bit of insight to, you know, how rock and roll really works behind all these closed doors. And that just because they're a groupie doesn't mean that the rockers see them as disposable. It's usually only regular society that sees the groupies as disposable. Not the rockers, not the roadies, not people that live within the rock and roll bubble. No. The 80s, like I said, yeah, blast, because that was the 80s. It was the last of the fun, free times where we could be sexually experimental and crazy and wild and rock and roll. The 90s kind of shut that down, but you kept the people that you already knew closer and established more bonds and friendships and love with them. And the dating became a lot more than just sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So, all right, guys, hope you enjoyed everything. Hope you enjoyed your troopers, if everybody's got one. Go grab it. Like I said, just easy drinking, normal pub beer. So, all right, guys. Again, don't forget to hit the subscribe, especially to those guys just stalking the channel. Hit subscribe. Hit the like button and hit my bells, and I will see you on Sunday for some cocktails and rocktails. Cheers, big ears.